At the 20th Soviet Party Congress in February 1956, in a secret session that was not filmed, Khrushchev denounced Stalin as a criminal. Mao took it as a threat to his own style of leadership. Mao's attitude was very clear. He thought that criticism of Stalin was inappropriate. Stalin was an international statesman. Mao Zedong said to him, your decision isn't right, your speech isn't right. Khrushchev begins his arguments. But Stalin is a member of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. It's our right to deal with him as we see fit. It is the personality cult of Stalin. That's why we've taken our decision. Mao Zedong. It is true that he is a member of your party, but he is also leader of the World Revolutionary Movement. We are the followers of Stalin. How can you reduce the role of Stalin to being only a member of the Soviet Communist Party? Just like that. In October 1956, the Hungarians rose up against Soviet domination. While Khrushchev hesitated, Mao urged a violent crackdown. For the 40th anniversary of the Soviet Revolution, Mao went to Moscow. He used the occasion to put himself forward as the new leader of world revolution. But Soviet aid was undermining Mao's aim for total independence. The crunch came in 1958. Khrushchev wanted to set up a long-wave radio station along the Chinese coast to guide Soviet submarines. He suggested setting up a joint naval fleet. This was a clear sign that the Soviets wanted to control China. Mao's understanding was that the Soviet Union was trying to control China in the same way as it controlled countries in Eastern Europe. So he got angry with Khrushchev and said, if you want it, I'll give you the whole coastline and I'll go back to the mountains. Mao still needed Soviet know-how. He wanted to create China's own nuclear industry. The Chinese comrades then expressed a new wish. They said they would very much like to receive more aid from us in order to build plants and facilities for the production of the atomic bomb. Such an agreement was signed. Mao said that the atomic bomb was a paper tiger. But he also knew that whether a country had the atomic bomb or not had a huge bearing on its position in the world and on its international influence. In 1958, Khrushchev visited China to renew Soviet support. But Mao's nuclear demands had already strained relations with the Big Brother. Mao Zedong said, you are communists and we are communists. Communists usually share. Will you give us the atomic bomb or not? Khrushchev. And what do you want the atomic bomb for? We have the atomic bomb, and we will stand up for China just the same as we would for the Soviet Union. Yes, Mao said, it's true. But we are not just some tin pot village. China is a great country, and we want to have it. Khrushchev. You don't need it. And so on. Mao then says, so you don't want to give it to us then? Despite the fact that we tried to slow down the help with nuclear weapons to China, we had already given them the blueprints and practically all the assistance necessary for making the atomic bomb. When Khrushchev next visited Beijing, he'd just been President Eisenhower's guest in the United States. After a frigidly polite reception, Khrushchev was accused of being an American stooge. 
Khrushchev protested that this was no way to talk to a communist leader. Mao's foreign minister, Marshal Shen Yi, was screaming at Khrushchev. He said, you're only a political leader, but I'm a marshal and I'll say what I like. This argument had a huge impact on Sino-Soviet relations. From here on, no common ground could be found on major issues. After that, they split up. The struggle for preeminence in the communist world was now out in the open. Here were two despots, each used to having his own way. They couldn't cooperate. In the communist camp, the question was always, who was number one? Who was the Tsar? On one occasion, during the 1959 trip, Khrushchev spoke disrespectfully about Mao Zedong. He said that Mao was an old boot that ought to be thrown out. They had to translate old galosh, and they translated it as old boot. But in Chinese, it means both old boot and prostitute. And when Kang Sheng heard those words, he took it that the great leader was being called an old whore. Soviet advisers would soon be withdrawn from China. Rivalry between the communist powers was ideological as well as personal. Ideological squabbles could get quite comical. The Soviet side would say, we are the Marxists. And then the Chinese would say, no, we are the Marxists. The Soviets would say, we are red. And the Chinese would say, we are even redder. It could appear funny, but the damage was really serious. The party started issuing documents, editorials, attacking Soviet revisionism. So, so, so from then on, along with other slogans, we had to shout down with Soviet revisionism. Uh, later on, it was you know, down with Khrushchev. 